After speaking with Corey at the base of the Superstition Mountains, which is a really great and informative episode, please go watch it if you haven't already. We headed with Corey to a ghost town in the shadow of the superstitions named Goldfield. The settlement of Goldfield was founded in 1892 when high grade, very rich gold ore was found in the area. Within a year, the population had exploded. The town received its first postal office and was officially named Goldfield. In its heyday, with a population count of almost 1,500, Goldfield boasted three saloons, a boarding house, a general store, a brewery, a blacksmith shop, a butcher shop, and a school. However, good things never last, and after five years as a thriving community, the quality of gold greatly deteriorated and Goldfield died and was left abandoned by the miners. A few decades later, a man by the name of George Young, the then acting governor of Arizona, brought in new mining methods and gave the town a rebirth. Pretty soon it had another post office, a large population, and the town was renamed Youngsburg. However, the Goldfield curse set in again and after five years as a thriving mine town, the gold dried up and the settlement was once again abandoned. In the time that the town sat empty, it deteriorated beyond compare and unfortunately most of the original structures disappeared. In the mid 80s, a man named Bob Schuess purchased the property and began to painstakingly restore it and has since reconstructed the property to look exactly like it did during its heyday. While digging through construction on the new ghost town, Bob discovered a set of human remains that have come to be known as the Unknown Prospector. His bones were reburied in a different area and marked with a monument and his spirit is thought to be the one who haunts most of the town. One interesting thing here that I'd like to add is that a lot of paranormal programs that have been filmed here at the ghost town have failed to mention that the buildings in town are not completely original. In fact, most of the ghost town was located on a separate parcel of land adjacent to where Goldfield sits today. However, as I was watching the episode that Ghost Adventures produced here at Goldfield while preparing to investigate the town later that night, it seemed that they failed to include the fact that the town was, for the most part, not composed of original structures. In the episode, they also tried to make it seem like the mine itself on the Goldfield property, which is a reconstructed dummy mine, was actually an old abandoned mine that once produced gold. As it turns out, the mine was never a functioning mine in the first place, only an attraction constructed by Bob during the restoration of the town. I just found this to be particularly compelling, and it shows that to find the truth, you yourself need to go do some research and make your own conclusions. There is also a cemetery on the property nicknamed The Last Dig, which I couldn't find any information about online, save for a find a grave page entry claiming that bodies were discovered here in 1993, and some other paranormal bloggers claiming that it was, in fact, a 100% real cemetery. I don't want to lie to you guys, so if anyone can find any information on the cemetery online, please relay the info to me by commenting it on this video. Either way, the Goldfield Ghost Town is an extremely active paranormal hotspot. We discovered this out for ourselves while investigating the property that fateful night. So we can either go down the steps, it's this big building right here. Okay. <laughs> So Mike, before we uh, head in here, can I have you kind of introduce it? Uh, this is our bordello here in uh, Goldfield Ghost Town. And we're gonna go in and see what we can find, I guess. Lights on there. No, we can keep them off. Yeah, okay. So you got your main parlor right here. You got a little area that can look out towards the streets there. And then we got a couple of rooms back here. A smaller one to the right here and one towards the back there. So what's, what's the history of the hauntings in this building that you know of? Hauntings in this area. Now, they claim we have uh, like... Three, three spirits. Karen's one of them, which uh, used to be a tour guide, one of the original tour guides, actually, um, when they first built it, started building the town in the bordello here. And she died of natural causes, I believe, but she keeps the girls in line. Yeah, she, she likes to make sure things are tidy around here. Um, we've had girls that are literally too, a little bit too scared to come to work because apparently they weren't doing what they were supposed to do up here with the tours and stuff. So, yeah. Um, I've been told that there's a like a little feminine feel, 12, 13 year old young girl, you can feel like a young thing. She likes to pull on your uh, shirt and kick you in the heel for some reason. And then we got the mean cowboy and uh, he's the one that uh, scratched that one gal that Bob was talking about and if uh, they caught him coming up the steps here the one time. 
time, so. I didn't hear that story. Someone got scratched in here? Mm-hmm, she I got scratched on the chest here and on the back. Now, the back ones we didn't see. I didn't catch those exactly when they formed. Um, but uh, the ones on her chest, there was one here, and then we literally saw one here and this one come down like that form right on camera. Wow. So I wish I still had that footage. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, we had a couple of gals' names being called, too, in uh, EVPs. Interesting. So, yeah. Have you ever had any experiences in the building that in besides here, that? here, mainly I got kicked once. I uh, got a lot of protection on me, not really messes with me too much, but you hear things. I hear things a lot, uh, but I don't get physically bothered. But hearing names or knocks. Sometimes if you look over here on the uh, counter over here, you'll see, um, see we've got these bullets here. All right, And usually these glasses are like this, and these, these are usually like this. And if you notice, kind of hear that, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll hear a, the distinct sound of the bullet hitting the glass and there's nobody around here to do it. But they used to keep that just like that. And uh, on the bar, they don't do that apparently anymore, but you'd hear the, the bullet hit the glass. Interesting. Yeah. So what are the buildings that we can uh, explore tonight when we're here? Well, we can look in here. Um, there's really not much going on in any of the buildings. Um, I'll take you through the mine tour, uh, take you down there and kind of so you can get the experience of what, what the mine is and how that feels down there. It's pretty pretty crazy. We've done some, some uh, you ever use a candle to communicate? Mm -hmm. We've done that a couple of times, which is really interesting. Gotten some responses. Do you have a candle that we could use? Um, I do have a candle we use. I can grab it out of the hoist house before. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Tour guide, always ready. <laughs> so yeah, um, and I even got a lighter. So perfect. <laughs> so yeah, this one is mainly the probably the most active area. Interesting. Um, that you get. There are times from uh, you know down in the streets where you absolutely know that there's nobody up here, and they leave a light on. You can see over in the little. Um, bay window area over there, you'll see the curtains move and stuff. And as you can tell, there's no air running in here. No. So uh, the air conditioning doesn't work right now. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, you see the, the curtains move. We literally want, there's a couple of mannequins in here and there used to be two or three that would be in there. And um, <laughs> you're not going to believe me, but we literally had to move one of them because she kept moving. Ugh. Yeah, we would put her one way and she would be like totally looking the other way. There's a doll in the other room that likes to look around too. So yeah, yes. you get yeah, pretty fun that. stuff. Yeah, creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like dolls. <laughs> I like dolls. Yeah. So I'm going to give you the EMF meter. You can kick that one off. Mm. Okay. Corey, if you want to take the REM pod, yep. we could set that right here. I'll turn it on. I'm not sharing code. I'm not sharing code. Explain what this thing does again. Explain what this thing does again. Oh, shit. Sorry. Right, so if I throw my code over, it's probably over Okay. See how it's disturbing that little field as okay. I move it around? So what kind of, um, what's what's it sensing? Any uh, EM disturbance in the actual field that is kicking out. The electromagnetic Not, field. Yes. I don't know why it's doing that. It's wigging out right now. Unless something's over there. It's like wigging out no, for some weird. reason. That was very strange, yeah. And then it stopped when I said that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. Okay. This, this is kind of That's weird, actually. This wasn't happening at all last night. Um, right to the bullets, huh? Yeah. Um, where, where Mike said they were at, in the bullets. Dad, do you want to hold the EMF meter around the um, counter to see if there's any reading? I'm going to get too close to okay. That's very strange. Okay. He likes that yellow. That's weird. I've, I've barely ever seen that yellow even go off. Okay, you better uh, try something, talk. Um, are you lighting up the yellow light? Okay. 
Can you light up one of the other lights? It's coming from my direction, that means. Why don't you step to a different area? Okay. Dude, this is bizarre. Yeah, no, that doesn't go off a whole lot. Can you explain to me um, what the different colored lights mean? Are they different fields or is it directional? Directional. So okay. that would mean it's coming from the direction of these glasses. Well, when we when he first lit it up, the yellow light went off on them bullets, right where Mike said they'd be over there. Mm -hmm. Can you tap one of the bullets against the glass? Oh, yeah. Temperature is changing as well. I'd ask about that bullet again, Colin. It's like it new. Can you touch one of these bullets that's on the glass? What do you think about this? Kind of trippy? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Ooh. Mike came out and said they went right for them glass and them bullets and yeah. it's put them weird. out there and it's the first thing that lit up and it keeps going over to them. Mm -hmm. Do you like the glass and bullets? Mike, what's the story behind them? How come they had them bullets up on them glasses? Is there a specific reason they're set out like that? I think it's how they uh, paid for uh, they paid. They paid by the size for the whiskey. I think, okay. like so, they paid by the size of the bullet. Maybe I'm, not, I'm trying to oh. remember. I can't remember. Yeah. It's been so long since I've heard that story. Out of curiosity, what caliber bullets we got there? Temperature. Temperature just bullets. increased. If I long hold and. So 4570, 45, 90, 70, 4570. Yeah, okay. Buffalo gun. Mm-hmm. Okay, guys, you want to all be quiet for a second? We can ask a couple questions. Yep. Turn the light down a little bit. Is there anybody here in the bordello that's willing to make contact with us tonight? Can you give us either a knock or some sort of a sign that you're here in the building with us? Was that just me shifting my weight? I think that was your weight. Yeah, it was. Kind of odd how that's gone silent. Yeah, yeah that's true. Oh, right when you said it. You're oh. still here. Oh, that's bizarre, dude. <laughs> Can you light up one of the yellow lights or the green lights like you were prior for us? How about you just reach for one of the glasses and the bullets? Can you give us any sort of a sign that you're here so we can begin to communicate with you? Can you come stand by the bar if you are in this building? Sure. Sorry. Can you step away from the bar? I think we definitely. Interesting. Look, it doesn't happen. Can I stand right where you are? Hmm? Like if I could stand right where you're at. I guess we kind of get this angle here. Do you find in your research, Colin, that um, uh, the spirits or entities 
their ability to manipulate it's not usual. in the three dimensions. Yeah. Um, it ebbs and flows based maybe on their available energy. It's got to take Definitely. a lot of energy to, Definitely. to come down to a three dimensional. But I mean, here we're kicking out stuff from camera, lights, even, and then this building still has power. So they have some to draw from, is what I would imagine. That was my next question. Do they, do they draw from the equipment? Because I know batteries Definitely. drain. People. Equipment batteries drain constantly. Like these batteries mm -hmm. just out like that. Even lights, they'll just die, cameras all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely a thing that happens frequently. Mm -hmm. Can you use your voice to communicate with us if you are in the upstairs? Are you one of the girls who worked in the bordello? Just before that went off, I felt like a like a thump right below my feet. Mm -hmm. I felt a surge. No one below me. Oh, I'm feeling kind of cold energy almost over here. Right over there. Yeah. Cold energy. Exactly. I felt a surge go up my spine just a moment mm -hmm. ago before that went off. Are you over there in the parlor area? Can you give us a sign that maybe you're over here? Maybe knock on something over here or move an object and step closer to us? That was you. Can you do that one more time? Is that you? Did you hear that? Is that you? That? Oh, that was, was a. Did you hear that? I almost it's certainly heard that. that. Okay, that was a like a. Tells you that's okay, that's exactly what we wanted. Can you give us one more thing just like that so we can con continue communicating with you? You can do it. We're not afraid of you. Were you one of the girls that worked here in the bordello? Maybe you're not one of the girls that... Yeah, yeah could, could. Were you not one of the ladies of the bordello? Were you one of the men that frequented the place? We all heard you either breathe or move something over there. Could you please just repeat that action so that we know that we're talking to someone? It almost sounded to me at first like something being like wound. Like almost like an exhale with like the, the faintest the faintest vocal cord coming through the exhale almost yeah. like it was almost a moan but it was more of an exhale than that well that's probably like, what it was you know it came from right over there just yeah. in the corner gosh oh okay like it. it's the first time that's illuminated okay do you want us to come over to that corner are you over there which we had if you want us to come over to that corner Please illuminate either the temperature here or one of those little lights. All I have to do is touch 
this area where the light is coming from or stand over here. Do you want us to stay out of that corner? Is that your corner? Light one of these lights if you do not want us to come over. Is this battery char fully charged? The camera battery? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, I think it's almost dead. It's, I think that's our... Gosh. Well, you want to take it? Yeah. This thing's just going off like crazy. It's all, every time it's like a different tone, too. What do those tones signify? That's just how high the temperature is. Um, In the immediate vicinity right there? Yeah, fluctuating. Just... I've never seen that light. Yeah, Look at, Dad, do you see that light yeah, flicker yeah, just now? Look at it. I know, it's good. It's Dude, it's wigging out. It's actually flickering. The fact that the camera battery died while all of this crazy energy was pulsing through the environment is pretty insane to me. We had only been rolling for a few minutes and bam, it had already died. The battery drain also came only a few minutes after Corey and I had talked about that very thing happening. Check this out. That was my next question, do they, do they draw from equipment? Because I know batteries Definitely. drain. People. Equipment batteries drain constantly, like these batteries mm -hmm. just out like that. Even lights, they'll just die, cameras all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely a thing that happens frequently. Mm -hmm. um, the camera batteries? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, I think it's almost dead. It's, I think that's our, gosh. I always think it's weird when during investigations we talk about some form of activity and that it actually happens pretty soon afterwards. It shows that there's a connection between the events and that these spirits or environmental energies are somewhat conscious of what we are saying and doing. Anyways, enough theory for now. Back to the episode. You guys, uh... I'll go, I'll go step, I'll go step over here. You see if you notice anything change over here. I think this is the area where we all heard the sound come from. It kind of smells almost sweat. What? I was just, I'm just smelling myself. I'm well, what are you, what are you going to say? I'm, I'm smelling actually more of a smoky, like a uh, perfume. I was going to say sweat. Mine smells like sweat over here. Were you over here in this little turret room? Is that one of you guys? Is that one of you guys? Is that, did you hear like a poke? Yeah. I heard it with me. Is that you, Mike? Was that you, Mike? No, I'm right here. That made the coughing noise? Yes, I did cough. Oh, okay. Okay. That's what I thought was going to Just when you oh. said you go to the mine. Yeah, there's just a little rattle too. So I just asked if I should. Oh. <laughs> it's like shut the 
hell up. Oh. That's how you know it's one of the girls. Mm -hmm. You can't get a word in there twice. Really? <laughs> Were you standing right by me? Come and move this meter right here. Move the needle for me. You hear those dual tones? I basically just asked if I could spend five minutes in here alone. It just got so triggered by that. So maybe it means yes, it would like mm -hmm. that. Sure. Let's sit out on the floor, okay? Yeah. yeah. And then I'll just come out and we can head over to the mine. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Should I do it with him? Yeah. How do we do on this? How do we do it? Okay. I'm trying to find the other one. Dude, right when everybody leaves. Maybe assholes Maybe they don't want anybody. Here. I don't know. Do you want Colin just to be here by himself? Okay. Okay. So I'm here now alone in the Bordello house. Dude, I think some a spirit that's in here likes me. Can you do that again if you like me?